This week's update made possible by Jack Cho, Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance. All right, we are oh, back. We, rolling? we are rolling. And it's, be careful, we have a fly in here today. This is yeah. we're at the Eagle Event Center, and you've got a fly. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what's up with you that. You sure it's not just a real small eagle? Oh, hadn't could, thought of that. It, it I could, like that. It, it absolutely could. Okay, be. we're gonna since catch it, is, it and paint it blue. Since it is the Eagle Event Center. Okay. Um, Very good. We'll a, have the ag department eagle. see if they can <laughs> rope it or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. With George and have him figure that out. So, uh, we're like in under a week now yeah. before school starts. Yes, uh, and it's exactly a, a week. The, the Thursday, August 6th is the first day of school with kids. Wow. And teachers Monday, came the back, third. teachers came back, come back well, today? The, the teachers have been in a week of professional development this week, mm -hmm. and they've come back Monday and have more professional development, and then kids on Thursday. Wow. This, the, the, the first week in August is generally the time that we really finally get the classrooms all completely in place and... Mm -hmm. and Start that part of it. it this week is learning buzz new technology. Yesterday. I was and, in there, yeah. people hanging things on the walls and everything. It could have been the fly. Very likely. Yeah, it was causing the buzz. I understand there's a buzz about masks. Yes. So, so this one, Jack will not scoot over. So I started wearing my mask to the show, and <laughs> uh, but th we were doing this to, to practice. I, I find myself halfway across the parking lot, and I, oh, I forgot my mask. And I go back and get it and put it on. I've had to remind a lot of folks during the the, the week. Because uh, it's just not just not normal, and I'm not sure it fits exactly for this show. Because this is we wear our masks when it is appropriate and applicable. Mm -hmm. There are times uh, when we we don't have to wear a mask in the classrooms, uh, at outside activities. It's not as big a deal. Um, when again, if if you were to be playing an instrument, or you're to, supposed to be singing, or you're eating, uh, you know, we don't expect masks at that time, and we would. Uh, in place of that, work on social distancing and making sure that we use hand sanitizers and wash our hands more frequently. But it, it is it is a good idea to start working with your kids. Let them see what people with masks on look like. Um, Randy uh, Franklin is a trooper when it comes to can you find this on the web for us? And she finds we, we've, we've identified some uh, uh, see-through masks. So if you have a small child or a really? student that needs a mask, but but is also working on speech or reading or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, the, it's amazing the products that folks have come up to sell us now that the COVID is full force. So, um, <laughs> uh, but again, but but it, we would appreciate it and help your kids practice putting their mask on. Yep. And when they take their mask off, practice not losing the, them. Yeah, put it yeah. In, a, in a pocket. Um, so like a special pouch on their clothes. Mm -hmm. and, and I can see a holster. A you holster. Know, like, <laughs> what about your a holster, uh, my, my little yeah. phrase, little, uh, little pocket to put it in. Yes, okay. and, and um, you know, again, help them take them off, put them on, uh, store them appropriately, uh, put their initials in them. Mm -hmm. We don't want them sharing masks; that would de defeat the purpose. Uh, so again, start practicing with a mask. <laughs> I, I know, without a doubt, it's going to be the um, the most uh, heated topic that we'll probably have to deal with is the mask part of it. But uh, the, there's four things that CDC has been very um, consistent with mm -hmm. is masks, social distancing, washing hands, and using hand sanitizer. Uh, we, we, if we want to be in school a month from now and not be all online, we need to take care of business today, and, and that is taking care of each other and taking care of ourselves and not spreading that's, it as much as we can. So I think that's the point a lot of people are missing. They're all worried about all of this. It's new. Yes, it's new, but Certainly. the alternative is your kids will be home all day. How'd you like that from March? Uh, yeah. Till now, so. so this is, you know, let's work on this yeah. and keep our heads. And uh, so I will tell you, we are phenomenally better prepared. If we were have to have to go online, mm -hmm. uh, we've received a grant. We've got a tremendous amount of equipment, and we're working with a company out of Canada that basically creates every teacher a digital room. Um, it's not like Zoom where you'd have to get a different room. This this would be set up to where it's their room. Just like Miss Woods has a first grade classroom that she teaches in, she would have a first grade virtual room that would be her room, and it would be her room all Very the time. Cool. And Mrs. No Avila sharing. will be on next, and she's okay. going to talk a little bit about how that okay, works. Okay, good. And, good, good, good. Yeah, very, very good plan. I noticed there's some new things sprouting up sure. around campus, like some wind, right. rain shelters and right. things yeah. like that. Well, we're wrapping up projects. Um, we are in a, a, a fairly significant, fairly serious downturn funding-wise, uh, and so we're just wrapping up projects, and this is something we had started last year. Uh, the um, 
where the um, grade school lines up uh, after school to north be picked up auditorium. north of the auditorium on the yep. circle. Mm -hmm. uh, we added a, a break there. It's it's not complete yet. When it's done, the sides will be uh, framed in. There'll be a four foot opening so you can walk on the sidewalk. Just you just go all the way through there, and the back is is covered, and then the top, of course. Um, one thing that'll change is right now there's a bar across the bottom as part of the support that comes out and the, the openings will be framed so there won't be anything to trip over. Very good. Uh, so that's in place. And uh, we've uh, upgraded the um, the transportation for the cafeteria. You know, they, they well, move I saw food. a little shelter over we in the We have a shelter and underneath that shelter would be uh, parked a new van mm -hmm. that is um, um, better suited for what we're doing with moving uh, food from place to place because we also are going to be taking care of... Um, um, head Start, mm -hmm. and we also have the daycare firing up this year, and we'll provide meals for them as well. Uh, so, again, we, we've added a, a new van with a new lift and all that, and it goes under the new shelter that's just behind the school. And the that school helps the, the cooks uh, transport the food from building to building without weather and e Exactly, rain. I, yeah, <clears throat> and I, I apologize because a lot of times I just, I know how it's done, so I just assume everybody else does, but they load the food, they cook all the food at the high school cafeteria, mm -hmm. Then they put it in hot carts, and then they put the carts in the van, and then they take the van to distribute it to where it needs to go. Very so, cool. Uh, that was that's why the van and the the, the shelter, because they were trying to load those in bad weather all sure. time of the year, and so on the this north side of that them. building, and right. yeah, it's a mess. So, this so yesterday, <clears throat> the thermal imaging equipment. And today, started. I guess, was installed mm -hmm. or beginning to be installed. Laid it out, got everything in place, and then and a, a big part of it was stall, installed yesterday. The, the balance of it's being installed today. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be in line for some training. Uh, this will be the first line in, in uh, detecting if someone has a fever. Now, again, when, they, when it detects that they have a fever, it means that they have a fever. That does not mean they have the COVID or anything else, uh, the rabid squirrel in Colorado or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It just means they have a fever. So that's the first uh, sign that we look for. Mm -hmm. Then if they have a fever, then they would go to uh, a, a secondary thermal, which would be another one of the kiosks mm -hmm. uh, that, that go along with the system. And they'll get their temperature taken again. And if they still have a fever, then they would be um, go sent to the nurse or the athletic trainer, whichever one was appropriate for their building, and then we have a protocol we would follow moving forward from that point. So that is going in right now. Very good. And there's, uh, we're actually in production on a We're Going In episode that talks in depth yes. about how all these things That's work, the and right. I actually try to trip it up and stand on my head and right. do weird things. So pretty, pretty interesting. Um, it's much more than just a thing that takes your temperature. Pretty right, and, 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 is, and again, don't want to get too far down the road, um, but we're so focused on COVID that we are not even talking about all the other features that it can be oh, yeah. uh, allowed to do with just a little bit of programming, a little bit of creativity. Yep. It, it, it's got a lot of, of, um, of um, opportunities uh, built into it. August 13th is a big football day. I guess it's the Meet the Eagles. Meet the Eagles. It's actually all the athletics the, oh, that, the, yeah. the, that's on. Okay. We're having it in conjunction with, uh, right now the plan is to have it in conjunction with the blue and white scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they would have the Meet the Eagles, the, the student athletes will be on the field. And the, and the whole thing happens at the football field. Happens at the so football field. So you're not field. having to move around. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and so, again, maybe that's not always going to be appropriate for a mask, but we, we have a place that we can social distance from a crowd. The, the, the biggest concern that we have is, in, is uh, introducing somebody to our, our system that uh, is not a part of it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't have a large event that's open to the public and have these kids there at the same time where they could mingle easily again at a school event. I have no um, uh, misgivings that as soon as the Meet the Eagles is over that they don't go get in the same car and drive home. I get that. But it's our responsibility to keep them as safe as we can sure. while they're at school. Uh, and so the Meet the Eagles will be where the, the student athletes are on the field, parents and, and guests are in the stand. Very good. And that, there's some events before that too some food and things like that i from what i understand I, you know that's true um and that's what i know as well good we'll leave it at that sorry watch uh, all about hennessy.com and the all about hennessy facebook page details are coming soon um i think that's all i had okay you have something you're going to vote well, on tonight at this, the school board meeting this goes to the school board it's the uh, hennessy public schools return to learn plan mm -hmm. required for us to put together by the state uh, department of education uh, it outlines uh, all of the protocols and procedures that we'll do in dis different events 
Um, and it will be voted on by the board tonight, and then it will be posted, uh, I'm sure, about, on about Hennessy on the school website. Um, we'll have Barb a copy. We'll make sure everybody gets it so everyone can get the information out. Um, and, again, that's the, the return to learn plan. Uh, I know it's been kind of circulated and, and parts of it have been out there, but this is the official return to learn plan that will probably be um, out of compliance as soon as we pass it because the, yeah, the, the say, guidelines are just... Life expectancy of about five minutes. But, yeah. This yeah. is our third rendition of what um, close contact means from the CDC. And C CDC, we ha you have to have a benchmark. Mm -hmm. you, ha you have to have something to know. You know, used to be when I would run sprints, they would like drive a stake in the ground so they could see if I moved or not. It's kind of like that. You have to have a place that you can identify if, they, if we've done what we're supposed to do. Well, mm -hmm. this is it, and the CDC is our benchmark. And so a lot of the things in this plan is based on what they're putting out as guidance for that uh, to, to return to school in a safe manner. Uh, we talked a little bit about the thermal uh, cameras, and we're going to go in more depth on that later. Um, we are, that kind of leads into that last thing is the, is the next thing is that we are still working on the procedures. Mm -hmm. We work through them and we work through them and we find a situation we had no way of planning for, or knowing was going to arise and we have to adjust for it. Uh, parents are very creative at coming up with questions about what if, and we try to, <laughs> you know, we, we try to answer them, but also try to plan for what if and, yeah. and try to. Well, no matter how place. hard you plan, when you throw 800 kids into the mix, it, Ever they are, we didn't think of that. Well, and we have, yeah, we have so. 850 kids, and you got 70 uh, certified staff, another 40 uh, non-certified staff. So you're looking at a thousand people that you're trying to put a system together that's going to work on a daily basis and keep everybody safe and secure. And, and our our first goal is that we want to make the site as secure as possible. That's why the the the, the thermal cameras were a large investment. Mm -hmm. there, there's again, not, not we're we're pretty, I think pretty well known for doing things big and doing things first. And there's not another system in the, the state like this or any anywhere, really. This company is yeah, uh, called Yeah, he said Century. this, I talked to Nick that Nick, installed mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. This is the first one. Century, yeah, Century, Century Security, mm -hmm. and that we're partnering with them. We're going to be kind of their guinea pig, and they've installed a, a, a high-end system uh, here at Hennessy, and, and uh, we're going to try to help them work through the kinks. Again, but as we learn how that works, that's going to create more situations we're going to have to try to plan for and, sure. and adjust for. Um, so, uh, and bus routes are another thing. We have a perfect bus route, and somebody moves into the district. Then all of a sudden, everything has to be reshuffled, has to be moved. Somebody that didn't ride the bus now it's going to ride the bus. Someone only going to ride in the afternoons. I mean, it, it's again, it's just a, a constant moving uh, target. But we've got a lot of folks putting a lot of time in, and you'll see from Miss Avalos and Mr. Um, uh, Crosswhite's uh, interviews that you'll, you'll see the effort and the time and the the sweat and tears they put into it as well. You know, this time of year is pretty stressful. Maybe not stressful, but pretty... It's stressful. It is stressful. Okay, it's stressful. Um, and then you throw, you know, this virus thing on top of that, and right. it just, everything amps up. So right. if there's any questions, comments, concerns, call, right. email, Absolutely. whatever, I'm still getting people commenting on our, on the Alba Hennessy Facebook page this doesn't work, or I can't make this go. Well, that's fine, but you need to call the school and or email right. the school or something and ask the question, not right. you know do the Facebook thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I have to I have to accept failure when I when I encounter it, and and I just Facebook and I just do not mix. Yeah, Mike we doesn't, just, we don't do get along. Doesn't do Facebook. Send well me an email. Send somebody. Send Jack. Mm -hmm. Uh, a Facebook send, and he'll send tell it to me. me and I'll tell Mike. Um, you know, I've got but, a couple but, of them right here. So, I, uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I think you could ask folks who have have done that, and we've responded. We, it's it's not something that just gets filed away. When we get a request, and 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 I've I've had phone calls as a result of it. Uh, I've I've sent a lot of them to the appropriate principal or to the appropriate uh, director or to, you know the, the transportation director for bus questions. And mm -hmm. so we'll get you to the right place. If you don't get an exact answer from me. I'll get you where you need to go to, to get that. But I, I, I think that the folks who have made comments have also, if they will look at what is in this plan, a great deal of what we got from parents is in there mm -hmm. just because we, we, we need to see things from their perspective because that's who's going to affect the biggest in the right. most way. So, again, let us know. Very good. Is that it? Uh, man, it's all I got. Bus routes. Are you still waiting? <clears throat> They're still, still in progress, still need yeah. to call in? Or, yes. Or yeah. Did I not just talk about bus routes? You said something about bus routes, but you didn't 
talk about. Okay, I apologize. They're, they're still needing to. Still a work in progress. Still call in. Still give us your directions from eighty one fifty one. We we had a a, a parent where they had, we had never pulled down the road in um, the country club, mm -hmm. and I think the last time I talked to Mr. Beeman, uh, that had all been resolved, and and we're actually going to be able to go do what they had asked us to do to to take care of their kiddos in the afternoon. So. Very good. Had we not got a phone call, kid would still be walking. Mm -hmm. Parents would be upset. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't know, and nothing we got done. But because the parent took the time to call, I'm not sure the kids are going to be happy because they're still going to have to go to school. <laughs> but, but at least they're going to be dropped off and picked up at their house, mm -hmm. and, and we knew about the problem, and we had a chance to fix it. Very good. All right. I guess that's it. Till Thank next you. week, we'll see if you survived. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, don't go away. Uh, Angela Alv Avila, Avila, principal yeah. of the middle school, high school, right. is coming up right next. Thanks, Jack. This portion of our show made possible by Roosters. And we're back. And I have Angela Avila, the principal of... Excuse me. <laughs> flies. The principal of high school and middle school. Yes. What is, what's your title? I'm the middle school and high school principal. Okay, because I know they changed the name of the schools, right. confused everybody. I don't know what's going on I anymore. know, okay. I know. And then there's this running joke that I am never to take Angela's photo, <laughs> but I schmoozed her into coming on here so we can visit today. So I think the big thing I wanted to talk to you about was is that everyone thinks the world is coming to an end and it's your fault. Right. And you're following guidelines. Tell, tell me a little bit about how we this are. is. We've been very adamant about in our district to make sure we keep up with the CDC guidelines. Um, we, in fact, I have a little, I was telling Jack earlier, we're sitting in a meeting discussing the CD guidelines and the safety measures we need to take. And right as we're talking about something, something changed on their website. So they're constantly uh, changing. Yeah, it's, it's, you just have to be patient, you know? And I think on some of these things, on one of these forms, I saw that we're, you're easing into this year and we'll just you just got to see what happens and right. how it evolves and how the numbers go and things like that all right so um i'm working off this is the sheet this is actually on the school website as well as the allabouthennessy.com website go to the allabouthennessy.com not necessarily facebook and all of everything we're talking about today is there so uh, transition times will be extended. So right. does that mean when they're in the in the hallways? Right. And again, we are going to give kids some guidelines and kind of see how that goes the first few days. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to make changes along the way, and that's okay. Um, our kids, we know they haven't been locked in their homes the whole time during this quarantine, but we do know that they haven't been to us in five months. And so wow, has it been that, that, long? that is, yes, it's been five months. Whew. And so um, there's a lot of things that we'll just all have to get reacquainted with on how to behave in the building versus, you know, running around outside. <laughs> and so one of the things that we did think about is we are going to limit the number of people that are in the restroom at the, at the same time due to social distancing reasons. And, and that is going to take a little bit longer for our kids to use the restroom, get a drink and, and get back to it or get to an, another class. Okay. Excuse the flies. <laughs> I, uh, we'll, we'll spray the, before we start again. Okay, so the next thing is um, if for some reason uh, someone in your family gets tested positive, what are they supposed to do? Well, one of the things that we're asking is, um, and I know you as parents and family members ask for us to communicate, and that's all we have to do is just be open communication between both the home and also school. Um, obviously, if your kid has any of those, those trigger symptoms, we need to know. Um, we don't want to alarm anyone, but um, we want to make sure that we're keeping all of our kids safe. So yes, please, if someone in your family does test positive, let us know. Okay, very cool. And by the way, all of this is uh, using HEPA, the Perfect. same, yeah, mm -hmm. that the hospitals and that have to right. use. So there's no name disclosures or anything Correct. like that. So, Correct. Um, all right. And then uh, I know this has been a problem. What if my child misses more than 10 days in a semester due to illness? One of the things, and actually Dr. Woods is probably a better one to talk about this on the technology side, um, but one of the things that we have equipped all of our classrooms with is basically they have their own virtual room. And so if a kid is out for an extended period of time due to you know self-monitoring or they actually have tested positive for the virus and they need to be quarantined, um, they can actually, from their cell phone or from even a house phone, 
call into the virtual room and be a part of that classroom. Wow. And so, you know, we know that this is going to cause a problem. We have problems sometimes with kids being gone 10 days or more anyway. Um, again, just notify the school, let us know, and we will work with that family and make sure we do not want kids to miss any more education than they've already missed. I think, and this is the reoccurring theme of this whole thing is communicate. You Absolutely. Know, call that main number, call, email you, right. just talk to us, talk to them. <laughs> I'm just the deliverer of news. Um, what's a, the daily check-in look like or going to look like? Well, it'll be a little different for both sites, but if you are a parent that is able to drop your kid off at school, we ask that you do drop your kid off at the south parking lot drive, or the south drive of the high school. Um, we will have imaging cameras in all the buildings, but for the middle school and high school, we like to start there because that's where most of our manpower is. That's where the kids eat breakfast. So if they could drop their kids off in the south drive of the high school, um, they'll walk through a thermal imaging camera and it'll basically take their temperature. Um, they don't have to stop and get a picture of themselves or anything like that. In fact, I don't even know if the kids will really know where their camera is located. Um, but that'll kind of let us know if anyone does come through the building that has a temperature. Um, once they do that, we will, we're will we going to work on procedures for breakfast because we do know that is a congested area normally. Um, we're talking about that. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, going to talk about it again on Monday. Um, so we'll have guidelines and everything. And as soon as we get that information in intact, I'll send that informa information out to parents so they can kind of help us out because they've helped us out a lot just with, oh my goodness, I have to wear a mask when I go to school. Some of the kids have um, really kind of the parents have eased their mind about that. So um, after they do that, then we will sit, we, we will send the kids to the gym like we normally do after they eat. Um, again, um, instead of saying practice social distancing and stay six feet apart, a lot of times teenagers don't necessarily know what that is. So we will probably move them over to the opposite side of the gym where they sit, where there are the chair backs. That way we can just say a seat or two in between you. Good. That's a little bit easier for kids to understand. They don't know what six feet is. No, they yes. do not. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about this, the face masks. Uh, will they be mandatory for all students that attend school? I know this is kind of a hot button controversial thing, but so what's the take on the face mask? Our district has taken the approach. Um, grades 6 through 12 will all wear masks. Um, I know that in the classroom we are in a situation where some classrooms can social distance a little bit more than others. Um, so for the classrooms that, you know, the kids can be social, you know, practice the social distancing, then they won't have to wear the mask. That's all going to be determined by the teacher. Um, but obviously in those crowded areas and in transition from class to class, we are asking every kid to wear a mask. Um, we do know, and I've already dealt with a couple of families, that unfortunately their kids have a medical condition as to why they cannot wear a mask. And so some are looking into the shields. And so, again, I just ask you communicate with me. Let me know if your child is in that situation. We are asking for parents to um, get in contact with the child's physician, um, get a note from the physician stating what the situation is. Um, that will be something that will between, be between your family and, and myself or um, your family and Mr. Means, and um, we'll kind of just work through it. Sure. Um, you know, I do know, I, I think I will have maybe one that won't be able to wear a mask, mm -hmm. and so it is what it is. We'll get through it. Yeah. Maybe a little extra monitoring Absolutely. or something. So, and we can even we can even transition a couple of kids if need be um, after the bell or before the bell, and no one will even know. Well, there you go. Okay. All right. Um, now we've just we talked, we got that just one. talked about yep. that one we're about the face masks. Um, lunch procedures. I guess this is kind of different than what we've right. been doing. No more right. lines. I will just tell you, high school students, you will have open campus. That was been a big <laughs> question um, with the high school kids. I know that's always a common rumor every year, um, but I know that's one of the things that we just decided. Um, we feel like that's a, a good responsibility for our teenage kids to have. Um, and then also they have to be back at a certain time. And so um, we, we do want to still allow our students to have that opportunity to go out to lunch. Um, the high school kids, they will be divided into two lunches. We'll do the ninth grade and 11th grade together. Mm -hmm. So one group will have what we call our Eagle advisory time and the other kids will eat lunch and then we'll flip flop that. So 10th and 12th will, 10th grade and 12th grade will eat together. And that's just to, to limit the amount Absolutely. of numbers. Yeah, okay. just to cut it in half is all. Very good. Okay, the no middle, more lockers. Well, and oh, I, I oh, want to go over middle school students. Middle school students, same thing. We're going to split them in half. Um, what we'll do with them, because they can't go out to lunch, is 
We will have teachers walk the kids to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a situation where that will have to be a little bit more controlled because normally our kids, when the bell rings, middle school students like to run everywhere still. And so um, we're gonna try to eliminate that from happening. And then while one group is in eating, another group will be out on the playground area or the blacktop area, and then we'll just switch. And I always say, you know, we like to give a time limit um, as far as, but we have some kids that eat in about seven or eight minutes. Some, it takes them 20, 25 minutes. And so we'll, again, just work with those kids. So if your child is one that does take a little bit longer to eat and maybe the first two days they, they get rushed out, please just call Mr. Means or myself and let us know and we'll make sure that you know your, your child does get enough time to eat. Good. No more lockers, huh? No. Mm. I know. That's okay. We, have put, we put too much they're stuff really in them close. anyway. Oh, they're black holes. Yeah. Yes. Um, we're trying to figure out what we need to do with backpacks, um, we know that we, we don't necessarily have enough space in the classrooms to bring the backpacks in and out, um, but we also don't want them necessarily staying outside the classroom because, again, a kid's going to have to go get into their backpack, which will be side by side. So we're working through all of that. Again, those will be things that we talk to the kids about, you know, when they return on Thursday. Very cool. And then Chromebooks, so they're going to be able to take them home. Absolutely. We will have Chromebooks. Um, Mr. Cameron and his crew, is, they have the Chromebooks ready to go. Um, we'll have them in their first hour class for high school, second hour class for middle school. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, they are theirs once they take them. The one thing that we do ask parents, if you'll help make sure that those things get charged up at night, that way the kids are coming to school prepared. Um, we do have, we have very few extra cords, but it is something that if a kid leaves a cord at home and it needs to be charged, we can help them out a little bit, of mm -hmm. course. Um, but just get in the habit. Kids don't ever have a problem charging their cell phones. No, <laughs> gee, the computer's dead. I, I don't know. know why, I gotta plug it in. That's right. Well, this is cool. Um, like we started with, it's, it's all in flux. Things are gonna change. Just breathe, communicate, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. Um, is that it? I do want to say one other thing. Mm -hmm. If your child is still interested in doing the virtual option, um, that is where a student basically takes um, online classes and has a teacher of record, which basically they'll be able to communicate with the teacher if need be. It's not on a daily basis whatsoever. Um, please let me know. And my email, I know that you'll have that posted mm -hmm. right here. So email me and let me know so we can make sure we get you guys set up in that program. Very, very cool. Thank well, thanks, you so Thanks for much. hanging out I with us. It. All right. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Barry Crosswhite that's going to talk about the smaller kids. This portion of our show made possible by Taggart's Garden Center. All right, we're back. And I have Barry Crosswhite, the principal of what? What are you the principal of? Uh, elementary. It's considered first through fifth grade. Okay. Yep. Good deal. You're the the challenging years, I guess. Oh, yeah. no, not really. They're awesome. <laughs> We're blessed to have awesome kids at it's, our school. It's a good bunch of kids, they are. Um, so I want to talk about um, some of the things that might be concerning to parents, children, okay. uh, school. Um, we just talked to Mrs. Avila about how the high school and middle school are going to be working, and we're just going to go a little bit about on, on your, your okay. north end of the, the campus. So... Um, I know that your the, the overall goal is to not have to go back to the distant learning thing. So, and and I think in this thing you had mentioned uh, once again I'm going off the parent guide that is on the allaboutHennessy.com website, not the Facebook page, allaboutHennessy.com website, and it's on the school website also. I yes, believe. sir. Um, and it says you're gonna do a slow roll. Describe a slow roll to okay. me. Okay, we're just not gonna, you know, get too excited and jump right out there and, um, you know, be free and have the kids not wear masks or not social distance. We're gonna back it up. We're gonna use the the the, the CDC guidelines or the State Department of Education guidelines, and we'll be imp implementing social distancing, students wearing masks, hand sanitizing. We're gonna be real strict with not uh, cross contamination with grades you know, allowing visitors to come into our school. So we're gonna start real slow, we're gonna start real safe, keep it tight for our students and staff mm -hmm. to be safe. And then as the year goes, we'll just re-examine everything as we go through the year and hopefully things will lessen up with COVID-19 and we'll be able to lighten up on some of our restrictions that are in place. 
So you're just going to kind of take it as it comes and see where, how it, how it's, if yes. it's improving or getting worse or whatever. But the goal is to start school like normal. Yes, sir. Sort of. Okay. Yeah, normal as possible <laughs> this year. Okay. So it says here, no lockers for the fifth grade. I, I guess, is that the first year that kids, kids have lockers? Yes. Fifth grade's the first year that they have lockers. They're located, you know, in the middle school. So they have lockers available to them. They switch every class. But we're just kind of following with our high school, uh, practicing social distancing, doing what the State Department of Education recommends, and doing away with lockers. There's just no way we could properly social distance with kids at lockers in between each class. Okay. And I know we've said this over and over again, but the parents are uh, required to provide masks for the children. It's actually part of the, what do you call it? It's pack part of the, the class supply list right. now, pens, pens, papers, and masks. Right. Yeah, we're, we're definitely wanting the parents to provide masks for the students to wear. If your student forgets to bring a mask on a certain day, we'll have disposable masks that they can wear during that day, and we'll make sure that they're safe while in our school. But just hard to provide masks every day for 400 and some students, and different kids like different styles of masks, and we want them to be able to have the mask that they feel comfortable with that they could you know, purchase on their own. I think you can have fun with it. I mean, I, I'm, we're now seeing, now that the, the, oh my gosh, we have to wear masks thing is over, now they're becoming fashion statements and <laughs> right. things like that. So it'll right. be interesting to see what some of the kids come up with. All right, so morning arrival is a little different now. What, just okay. talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, a lot of it's still the same. Uh, the morning arrival, yeah, you can drop your students off and the three locations as normal, our back gate by our playground. Uh, you can drop them off right there at 740 and they'll walk around to a door and enter our school. Uh, you can drop them off at the overhang between the early childhood center and the elementary gym and they can come right into the cafeteria at that point. And then after eight o'clock, uh, definitely after eight o'clock, we wait till the buses have cleared out, all the staff members have parked. And then after eight o'clock, parents can drop their students off in fr at the front doors of our school, front drive. Yeah, I forgot that the buses pull up there, so you can't yeah. you can't get yeah, in. Yeah, when there. we have buses and staff members, it's pretty hard to when we have parents join that. So we try to keep it clear for a while. Okay, all right. But um, yeah, a after they come into the school. Uh, every child will go through a thermal scanning uh, to check them for a temperature before they go to the classroom. And that's not scary, by the way. I was over there yesterday, and they were installing them, and it's literally you just walk in. You don't you don't know you're being scanned. Right. It's just you just walk <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah, it's painless. Um, all right, so and then lunch is going to be a little bit different. No more lines, is that correct? Right. Just when the students come in the cafeteria, they'll have their student trays sitting on the cafeteria tables. Uh, we'll stagger our lunch times to where we can have just a certain amount of kids in the cafeteria at one time. They'll walk in, sit down at a table, which will be staggered every other seat. Nobody will be sitting across from them. And they'll just sit down to their lunch and eat and get ready to go out to recess from there. Very cool. Um, and then departure, I guess, is normal, uh, 3 o'clock, normally Fridays at 2. Yeah, I think departure, the the... The pickup areas are the same. The main thing that we're trying as a school that when the kids are waiting to be picked up in the car line, we'll have them, the third through fifth graders will be spaced out in our gym, uh, the whole gym to use that for social distancing. Uh, Dr. Woods uh, secured us a nice overhang, kind of a building. The students could get under from shade, get away from the rain and the wind, and we'll have them in lines spaced out, you know, social distancing under our new shed overhang type thing that we're real lucky and to that's get. over near the auditorium right in that circle. yes uh -huh. i saw that yesterday that's pretty yeah. slick directly directly north of that so very cool um you're, you're trying to discourage parents from running in and out of the building is that true or is that right you're just you know trying to follow the, the guidelines that are in place that right now we just can't have visitors you know come into our school and take the chance of contaminating our students and staff. So if you're a parent and you're coming into our school, please come through the front doors. Uh, use our little doorbell that we have and buzz in. Uh, we'll ask you the nature of your visit. If you're just picking up a child to go to the dentist, uh, we'll, we'll get that child out of the classroom. Uh, you can sign them out in the foyer. Then they'll walk through our safety doors, um, you know, meet you at that place and you can walk on outside. If you're having to a serious meeting, something that needs to definitely happen, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a staff member, or a teacher, something like that, that, you know, we'll take your temperature, make sure that you're wearing a mask, and you could enter the building if it's essential that needs to take place. It's all about communicating and uh, 
let you know that, hey, we need help with this or something like that. Right. It's, uh, it's not, this isn't something you discuss on Facebook. This is something you email <laughs> Barry directly or call the school. And all of the numbers to contact everybody you would need to contact are in the description of this video, as well as on the school websites and on the All About Hennessy website. Yeah, we so, appreciate you put it on the All About Hennessy page. It was funny, the, the first one of these I did, I put all the numbers in the video, so you had to actually watch the video, and people were saying, well, where's the number? Well, <laughs> you didn't watch the video. Right. So now I put them in the description below. So uh, what else? I noticed you have your own list. Is, it, is yeah, there anything things, on here? Um, you know, we're kind of canceling some of our large you know, activities in the school. We really hate it, but we just won't be able to have Eagle Rally on Fridays like we normally do. It's kind of a big thing for us together as a school family and celebrate student success and have a good time. But we just can't put all the students in the gym and all the parents in the stands. So right now we'll probably start out the school year the first few weeks without any Eagle rallies. Then we might venture into a virtual type of an Eagle rally through our school. Then, you know, hopefully later in the fall we can, you know, pick up Eagle rallies. Um, you know, maybe a few grade levels at a time and invite parents, you know, each Friday or, you know, get back to where we got everybody in the gym safely, you know, hopefully in the in the near future. Are you still going to do the student of the week and month thing like you had been doing? Probably when we start the virtual Eagle rallies, if we start that, we can easily do that in the virtual process of an Eagle rally. I okay. mean, our students work hard and we want to recognize them. And, you know, it's always a big deal to stand up in front of your peers and be recognized in front of people. And they yeah. can, it won't be the same, but, you know, they'll know everybody in the school will be, you know, watching that in their classroom mm -hmm. and try to recognize our students that are working hard and doing a good job. Very cool. All right. Did that get it? You got anything else on here? Um, I don't think so. I think on breakfast in the mornings, I was just kind of to reassure the parents that, we have seven lines of tables set up in our cafeteria for breakfast, and the pre-K will set at one table, first grade at one table, all the way up to fifth grade. So there's seven lines of tables, and each grade will set at a table, and we're just trying to you know, stay away from cross-grade contamination and keep the kids as safe as possible. I was in your cafeteria slash gym yesterday and immediately noticed the beautiful floor oh man the new yeah. the new wood like <laughs> floor yeah. yeah that's very cool yeah that goes to dr woods you know he just noticed the need for a new gym floor and uh you know looked into that researched and found us a real nice floor and you know really appreciate everything dr woods does for our school and for our school district i mean especially at this time he's secured a lot of extra funds during this COVID-19 scare brought in a lot of money to try to help with the safety of our students and our staff and keep everybody safe. And, you know, we appreciate everything that he's done for our school district to, to get us lined up and ready to go. And, you know, a lot of other schools are really starting strict. There's um, a lot of elementaries out there in Oklahoma that students wear masks the whole time that they're in school, even in the regular classroom. And mm. they, they've canceled P and music classes, no recess. And, we feel we found a happy, safe medium at the elementary school where, yeah, we're still social distancing, we're still wearing masks, but we may not wear masks when we need to, like in the classroom when we're doing instruction with our homeroom teacher, the mask will probably be off in the homeroom. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, you know, make it where it's normal as possible, but still trying to keep our students safe. Don't make it a big distraction. You're, you know, just doing your best to keep it safe and get to normal soon. Well, great. Barry, thank you for hanging out with me for a little bit. And uh, like I said, any, uh, any phone numbers or contact information are in the description of this video. And we'll see you next week. This portion of our show made possible by Vernas at the Historic Ranch Room.